scratch. Hey guys, it's Jay, and today I am here with my 7 and 7 readathon wrap up video. If you guys are interested to see what I thought of the books as I was reading them, totally check out my vlogs. The 7 and 7 readathon is a readathon that took place from July 31st to August 6th, and basically the only challenge was to read 7 books in 7 days. Which I completed, so I am very proud of myself, just saying. So without further ado, let us get started. So the first book that I read, I kind of cheated because I was pretty much halfway done before the readathon started, but it is Everything That Leads to You by Nina LaCour. If you want to hear my full thoughts on the book, then check out my July wrap-up because that's where I go into detail. I ended up giving this book a 4 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. I really enjoyed it. It's about a girl named Emmy and her best friend Charlotte. They want to live in Emmy's brother's apartment, but the only way that he's going to allow them to do this is if something exciting happens during the summer. They go to an estate sale for this very famous actor named Clyde Jones, and in one of the things that they buy, they end up finding a letter addressed to a woman named Caroline, and this sets them off on this big adventure trying to figure out who Caroline is and how they can return this letter to her. So good. It's just so good, guys. So if you haven't read this book, please read this book. And if you want to hear my full thoughts, again, go check out my July wrap-up. The next book that I read for this readathon is Nerve by Jean Ryan. And I wanted to read this book because the movie came out and I wanted to see the movie. 100% movie better than the book, just saying. But I ended up giving this book a 3.5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. I had it as a 4 originally and then I rethought it after I saw the movie and I was like, you know, the movie was a lot better than the book so I brought my rating down. It follows our main character, V, who is the newest contestant in this online game called Nerve. And basically Nerve is a game of truth or dare without the truth. Each dare gets progressively harder, which rewards the players with a bigger prize or a bigger sum of money, whatever Nerve is giving them for that dare. V ends up getting a partner named Ian, and he is pretty attractive. He's played by Dave Franco in the movie. I don't think Dave Franco's that attractive, but you know, a lot of people do, so I'm not gonna complain, even though they could've picked someone a lot better, but whatever. Basically, they need to decide if Nerve is worth it in the end. This book was very fast paced. It was very fun to read. I couldn't put it down because I wanted to know what V and Ian were going to have to do next. But after seeing the movie, I realized that the dares in this book were kind of lame compared to what they did in the movie. In the movie, the only similarities to the story was that they had the same names and the concept of nerve was the same. That's basically it. I wouldn't recommend needing to read the book before you go see the movie, so if that's what's stopping you, then like forget it, just go see the movie, because nothing is the same. Really didn't like V. I found her kind of annoying and whiny most of the time. She did develop a lot in the end of the story, so that was nice to see. And a lot of the main characters were just, like, cliche and major trope issues. Like, it was just everything you see in YA, so it was kind of annoying. But I still liked the book nonetheless. It was entertaining, and it was really fast to read, so it was a good readathon book. The next book was my favorite book by far of this readathon. Like, it blew me away. It is Identical by Ellen Hopkins. I did not think I was going to like this book. I tried reading an Ellen Hopkins book before when I was like 14 and I absolutely hated it. It's about identical twins, Kaylee and Rayanne, and they are very similar and they both share a very dark secret. Kaylee is the main focus of her daddy's affection and Rayanne is craving the love that she never received. So Rayanne quickly turns to drugs and alcohol and sex in order to find what she is missing. With each sister spiraling out of control, they need to come together to save each other before it's too late. This book, oh my god, 5 out of 5 stars guys it was so good I read it in one sitting it was so fast-paced I could not put it down the book is so dark and twisted I loved every second of it I was on the edge of my seat the entire time I just could not with this book I had my theories of what was gonna happen which is what ended up happening I thought it was so far-fetched that there was no way that my theory was going to come out being what actually happened but the fact that it actually was I thought was super cool and usually I hate being able to call the ending but I was just like yes like this is amazing I absolutely 
loved the alternating perspectives of the twins. I thought it was such a cool concept for a book. And I highly, highly, highly recommend this book. Please read it. It's so, so disturbing, but so good at the same time. The fourth book I ended up reading for the readathon was Where Things Come Back by John Corey Whaley. I ended up giving this a 2.5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. I did not enjoy it that much, although I understand why a lot of people love this book. It just didn't sit well with me. During the summer before Cullen Witter's senior year, a lot of things happen in his small town. His cousin overdoses, his town becomes obsessed with this woodpecker that's supposed to be extinct for many years, and his little brother Gabriel goes missing. On the other side of the world, Benton Sage is confused and doesn't know why he actually joined a missionary trip to Africa. And basically the two stories end up coming together and it's had a very interesting concept and I wanted to like it, it just, it wasn't for me. I was very frustrated reading this book. If you want to check that out, it's in my vlog day four, I believe. It bothered me so much I could call the ending of this book. It was so obvious what was going to happen and it just frustrated me so much. Half of the book I didn't even know what was going on. It was very heavily religious based and I am not religious in any way so I was just like okay cool like I don't really care that much. The main character Cullen just something about him didn't sit well with me. He bothered me to no end. I feel like the book went off on a lot of tangents that had nothing to do with the characters or the plot. It kind of just felt that they were thrown in there to fill up space. I can see why a lot of people like this book, as I said, so I'm not saying don't try it, but it just definitely was not the book for me. But, I mean, it has two awards, so it's gotta be good to some people. The fifth book that I ended up reading is Please Ignore Veridites by A.S. King. I ended up getting this at 3.5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. The book follows 18-year-old Vera Dice and she is a pizza technician. Her single father ended up raising her after her ex-stripper mom left them in order to be with another guy. Her best friend Charlie just died recently, very tragically, and only Vera is the one who knows what actually happened. I loved the writing style in this book. I thought the different fonts and the crossouts and the flowcharts were such a cool concept and made the book a lot more enjoyable and fun to read. I loved how short the chapters were. I don't think there was one chapter that was over six pages. Which was very nice because I always find myself losing attention and I just cannot focus that long. And I loved how the chapters were some in the present, some in the past, and they were also from different perspectives like the pagoda building and Vera's dad and some were from Charlie. It was just a really cool concept for a book. Both Charlie and Vera were very unlikable characters. I still really loved them as main characters. I kind of didn't like Vera as much as Charlie. Vera was very annoying to me at times. Her decisions and the things that she did were just not what I would have done. So I was kind of sitting there like, girl, like, what are you doing with your life? Like, stop. The book tackles a lot of sensitive topics like alcoholism and abuse and grief and things along those lines, but it's done in a very effective and natural way that doesn't seem like it's in your face, which I really enjoyed. I think that the ending kind of tied up way too nicely, but it was still a great ending for the book and I would highly recommend this book. It was fun to read. The next book I really, really did not like. If you want to see my reaction reading it, check out my vlog because it's entertaining. The book is called Galaxy of Empires by Bruce Markham, and this is The Merchant Wars, Episode 1. I gave it a 1 out of 5 stars. This book follows Eve Noctu, who is a half-breeded snake lady reptile merchant thing, and she is part of this reptilian empire. She's telekinetic, and she has no problem using these powers for evil, especially when a war is called on her ship. I could not with this book, guys. The author changed his character's names like 20 times. There were originally these two snake twins. One was Helma, and the other was Noma, and then they ended up being Helma and Selma, and then there was also Gartooth, who ended up being Grimtooth half the time, and I just, it just bothered me. Like, if you're gonna write a short story, please know your character's names. I just... I just can't. There was like a million species in this book. There was like snake people, cat people, dog people, arachnids, humans, pirates. Like there was just too much commotion in one book to be able to follow it. But then nothing really happened plot wise. And then also they used the R word as an insult and then I was just done. So one out of five stars. I could not with this book. The last book that I read for the readathon is Rumble by Ellen Hopkins. I ended up giving this a 3 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. 
This is my second Evan Hopkins book. I was very excited to read it because I loved Identical so much, but this one just wasn't the same effect for me. It follows Matt Turner, whose little brother Luke recently committed suicide, and he is full of a lot of regret and guilt because when his brother called him in order to try to save him, he kind of just blew him aside and didn't think he was serious because he was hanging out with his girlfriend Hayden. Basically the book is him trying to come to terms with what happened and how he reacted and things like that. And although I think a lot of people would like this book, it wasn't really for me. Again, it had a big religious thing going on in it. I'm not religious so it just didn't settle well with me because I didn't know what was happening half the time. I did really enjoy the ending. I didn't see it coming. It was a good twist. I still really liked her writing style. She writes in like poetry, like free verse I think it's called, which I think is a very interesting concept. I did really enjoy it but it wasn't my favorite book by far. Identical, 100% better. Alright guys, so that is my 7 and 7 readathon wrap up. See you all in my next video. Goodbye!